Okay, and welcome to our video in which we're going to have a look at creating a maze game using Scratch. And the version of Scratch we're going to use is Scratch 3, the online one, although the offline one works much the same way. This will end up as a series of three videos, and during this series of videos we're going to have a look at producing our own sprite, our own background, a moving sprite which responds to a range of commands, a sprite which senses different objects, we're going to produce more than one level, we're going to produce a score and live set of variables, and our game will have a clear end so we know when it's finished. During this, we're going to have a look at create, covering a few basic computing skills. One of the key ones we're going to have a look at is using if statements to make a sprite respond to a range of stimuli, loops to make something keep on repeating either forever or for a fixed amount of time, and variables. Now a variable is basically just a part of the program where we can add it in and then we can keep changing what it's worth. So a constant is worth the same amount throughout, whereas the variables, the values will change as we play the game. Now to start with today, we're going to produce a background, a main sprite, we're going to get our sprite to move, and we're going to add in an if statement so that it can't pass through to the walls as we play the game. By the end of this session, we will have a movable sprite and we'll have a working background but it won't really be a game yet and then we'll start to have to add in things like lives and so on in the later levels so let's just have a quick look at this so what we're going to do is we're going to go onto scratch and on scratch the first thing I'm going to do is use F11 to make this into a full screen and then I'm going to give this a game so I'm going to call this my maze game I don't want to use the pre-existing um, character here, which is Scratch the Cat, so I'm going to delete Scratch the Cat. I'm going to hover over the Choose a Sprite option, and I'm going to go to Paint. Within Paint, we can either have it as a bitmap or as a vector. So I'm going to start with the vector because it gives us slightly more control. And I'm going to use the paintbrush. And my main character is going to be a crocodile, so I'm going to choose a greenish colour here. A bit darker and this is going to be the outside of the crocodile. You can make your lines thinner or thicker here. This is probably okay for me at the moment. And I can even a bit of a nose. I'm going to go around. This is going to be his eye. Give him some spikes on his back. Where's his tail? These are going to be his teeth. A bit of a jetty chin there. Here's going to be his front legs. Big stomach back legs going right the way to the point of his tail. Now I want to fill that in, so I'm going to go to the fill option and we go back to the colour, make it a bit lighter. We're going to fill them in so you can see that we can still see the outside line. We go back onto the paintbrush and this time I'm going to take the brightness right the way down so it comes black. I'm going to give him a bit of a eye and then the white of his eye, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to take the uh, brightness all the way up and the saturation all the way down so we get a white and then we're going to fill that. Now the reason I'm going to fill it, if you just look at the crocodile for a second, the crocodile moves around but when he goes over things you can see through his eye which is a bit freaky so we don't want that. So we're going to fill in that white space so now when we move the crocodile and see hopefully that that white of his eye now doesn't show anything through it. We're going to rename this so the sprite needs a name so we're going to call this Mr. Crocodile. Obviously your sprite can have its own name. And because this costume here, you can see within the sprite, this is the main costume, is facing left, I'm just going to rename this as left, because later in the game I may want to find that. In the game I won't always want my crocodile to go left, so I'm going to right click on him and duplicate him. And then clicking on here, I'm going to use the arrow button and I'm going to flip him horizontally so he's now facing the other way and I'm going to change this costume, you'll see it's automatically called a left 2 and I'm going to call that right. So I've now got a left costume and a right costume so I can have my crocodile going either way. Next thing I want to do if I go back to the main page here is I want to click on the stage and backdrops. And what I want to do now is I want to make my first level um, maze. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to rename this backdrop as level 1. And within the level, we're going to use the blocks option here. 
I don't want my blocks to have an outline at all, so I'm going to select this uh, no outline option, but I'm going to go to a fill so that my blocks have a particular colour. Now later on we're going to create a sensing option where when the crocodile touches a particular colour he gets sent back to the start. So we want to use a colour that isn't going to be elsewhere in the game. So I'm going to use quite a um, kind of brightish red because the crocodile is green so it's not going to, and most of the things he's normally going to encounter are going to be green so red should be a colour he's not going to touch too, too often. So we're going to choose red. We've made sure the outline is off. And what we can now do is we can create a maze here. Don't worry about the size of the crocodile at the moment, we'll deal with that later. So we're going to create a pattern that he's going to have to navigate his way around. So he's going to start off down this bottom left hand corner. And then he's going to have to go along here. And then around here. Once he's got around here, he's going to have to go up here. And what I will probably do is make this the end point here. So you can see he's now going to go around this set of navigation. And you can make it more complicated than I've done. Um, one of the things you do need to make sure is that these are thick enough lines so that um, when we add the sensing in, the Scratch program can detect it. If you make the lines too thin, see I jumped off there, if you make the lines too thin, sometimes it doesn't detect it before you've passed through it. It's going to be actually passing through the obstacles that you want. So I'm going to press save now because it hasn't saved for a while. I'm going to click back on Mr. Crocodile and then I'm going to click on code. If I accidentally stay on the backdrop and click on code, you'll find I'm trying to code the backdrop. And that's a common error that lots of people make. So I'm going to click on Mr. Crocodile and click on code. You can see the costumes are still there. And we want a few things to happen at the start of this game. So the first thing is my crocodile is clearly too big. So I'm going to make him a bit smaller. Let's try 50%, see what it looks like. Okay, he still can't pass through those lines. So we need to make him a bit smaller. Let's make him 30%. Okay, he's still too big. That tail won't go through there. Let's make him 25%. Maybe even 20. Okay, at this point it looks like he can pass through. It's going to be a bit tight up there, but he can do it. Makes the game a bit more playable, or a bit more challenging. He can pass through there, and he can get all the way up to there. So, so this is fine. Now, the next thing is I want my crocodile to start here. So we're going to use an event block. So this is when something happens. I'm going to start with a when the green button is clicked. So that when I press the green button, this is what happens. And I want quite a few things to happen here. So the first thing is I want my crocodile to go to this position. And you'll see he's at... The X position, so that's the position across the screen at minus uh, 185. If I'm moving into the middle, you'll see that kind of becomes zero, so that's kind of where the... It's not quite zero, is it? Almost. <laughs> Close enough. Um, you'll see zero is kind of like the halfway line there. And the same with the Y, I'm at minus 120. If I take him up, that will kind of edge its way towards zero. So zero and zero. If I actually just type them in, you'll see this. Okay, that is the very middle, and as soon as I go down from the middle, the Y increases, and as soon as I go left of the middle, the X increases. So Y is up and down, X is left and right. But this is fairly easy, because all I have to do is put my crocodile where I want him, and pull the go to X, and now if I move my crocodile somewhere else, and press the green button, he goes back to the start. So my crocodile is now in the starting position. I want him always to be facing this way when it starts, so I'm going to switch the costume to right, so when he starts, he switches the costume to right. And then also from the looks, I'm going to add show, because later on I may want to hide the crocodile, um, and when I press this one I want him to show again. So I mean just to show that, if I click on hide here and press the green button, he reappears. So I can hide him, when I press the green button, he reappears. So this is all good. But at the moment, this crocodile will not move unless I physically drag him around, which isn't the point of the game. There's lots of ways of making the crocodile move, and one of the ways of doing this is by using the um, move 10 steps option. That's really good for programming things like um, uh, stories and so on. I tend to prefer to use this one, which is the change x by and change y by because then we're being a bit more precise and we're sticking with the coordinate position so we're going to try that so we're going to add four new events we're going to add when space keys pressed we're going to add this four times when space keys pressed when space keys pressed 
when space keeps pressed and you'll see I've arranged them in a uh, kind of a square position so we're going to go to when space keep pressed and change it to up when space keep pressed and change it to down when space keep pressed and change it to right and when space keep pressed and change it to left so now if I press the left, the right, the up and the down the computer recognises that I'm pressing those you can see that because there's some flashing options up here but nothing happens because we haven't yet told it what it should do when I press the up button so we go back to motion and when we say when we press the up button we want to change y by 10 when we change the down button we want to change y by 10 because that's uh, up and down on y when we go to the right button we want to change x by 10 and when we press the left button we want to change x by 10 now you'll see if I press right and I press up he moves fine but if I press down he still moves up and if I press left he still moves right and that's because the values at the moment of all of these are the same so right should be changed x by 10 but as we saw before when we go left the number should be coming down so that should be changed x by minus 10 and it's the same for down so change y by minus 10 on down and now if I press the down button he goes down the right button goes right, the up button goes up, the left button goes left. So, next problem is when I press left, he's going backwards. So, we need to go back to our looks option and we need to change the costume. So, when he's going right, he should have the right costume, and when he's going left, he should have the left costume. And you'll see I've put those before the move, so he changes the direction before he moves. So, now if I go right, he faces right, if I go left, he faces left. Don't really mind which way he faces as he goes up, up and down, but you could, if you wanted, either draw a new costume to face up and down, or there is actually an option within here where it puts a rotation in so you could get him to turn. Okay? If you do the turn one, you will probably need to make sure that you set him to point in direction 90 degrees at the start, so if you turn him, you can put him back to the start, but I'm not going to use that one today. Okay, so this is fine, and this works but he passes completely through our lines without any problems at all, which isn't really what we're after. So now we need to think a little bit more. So what we're going to do, press the green to put him back at the start, and this time we're going to put a new event in. I'm going to say when the green flag's clicked again, so you'll notice that's the same one I used there. So in theory, all the code I'm putting in here, I could actually put in here. And on some programming you would have to, but Scratch allows you to have multiple um, events that do the same thing. And I'm going to use it, put it in a separate place just for neatness. So when the green flag's clicked, I want this to be sensing all the time. So in the control block, I'm going to use a forever loop. So it's constantly looking at this. After I press the green button, this is constantly running. Okay? And it's happening all the time. So you'll see when I press it, that kind of goes yellow because it's in constant motion. When I press the right button, you'll see this goes yellow because that's only happening when I'm pressing the right button. Okay? Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look for this red colour. So we're going to use an if and then option. So if something's happening, then something else happens. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to sense it. So we want to say if, then we go to sensing, and we're going to go to the touching colour. So if touching the colour, click on the colour, click on the colour picker, hover over the red, and you'll see this line on the edge of the circle goes red. Okay, so this time, when the green clicks, it's clicked, forever if it's touching the red color we want something to happen and what i want to happen is i want him to be sent back to the start so i'm going to put him back at the start and i'm going to go into the motion block and i'm going to use this same go to x option so now if i press the green button and move him he's fine he can go right so he can go left but if i try and go up here he should sense he's touching the color and he should be sent back to the start Okay, and again, if I rush forward like this, he gets sent straight back to the start again. And we could put a message in there. We could get him to say something when he does that. So we could say, or think maybe, since he's a crocodile. We could say, oh no, I'm back at the start. Or something that's funnier and better that you can think of yourself. So we press green again. We go across. He touches it, he thinks, strangely from his tail, okay, and then that message disappears and you're ready to go on again. Now, this is also where on the next stage we'll get him to start to lose lives. So just a quick test, can I get around the maze? We go right, it's a little bit tight here, I go up, I press left, okay, 
okay, I go up, I press right, but there's no end to this level yet, and when I touch the edge, it just sends me straight back to the start. Okay, so that's where I'm up to for now, and in the next stage, we'll start to add some elements in that start to add scores and lives and some obstacles into this as well.